here in my PET scan recently, and Jesus healed me. Hallelujah. Through Pastor Murillo, Jesus healed me. And I praise God for that man of God. What, so what happened to those lymph nodes? Well, first, what happened to your feet? Obviously, it's funny. I don't see a cane by your side right now. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! I don't need a cane. I feel the floor. I'm wearing these deer form slippers because it would just help me with that cane and bring comfort. I could wear my shoes now. I could wear my shoes now. It's shoe time in the house of God tonight. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. And what happened to those tumors? You, you've been reaching for them tumors. Where'd they go? I, would f I could feel it. And I feel nothing. I felt the mass. Like if you put your hand under your arm, you feel that mass. And I felt the burning pain. And I feel nothing. <laughs> nothing all day. I was in a heavy yet light fire rest just like jesus was going Shh. i couldn't get up to do anything if i had to i was able to get up to get ready to come here but that was it the rest of the time i was held in jesus's arms as he continued this massive work in me to make sure and to speak life into my existence so I could move forward in my, in the covenant he made with me in this dispensation. Amen. In Jesus name, yes. praise God. And if God does it for one, he'll do it for all. Come on. Woo! I'll end it with this. I know my father and I know he treats no one special. No one special by the age, no one special by the color, no one special by how many years of church you've been in. He loves you just as much as she as he loves our his daughter right here. Let's get excited about tonight. Let's get an expectancy about tonight. Praise God. Okay. All right, let's go. People of God, how many know that God is good? I'm gonna take some time to warm up. That's all right. You know, back in the church I grew up in, it wasn't a Pentecostal church, it was a Baptist church. And we loved call and response. So when my dad, the pastor, would say, God is good, we the people would say, all the time. I feel home. And all the time. Let's try it again. Stand to your feet, warm up your bones. God is good. And all the time, now somebody shout like you believe it. Come on, put those hands together.
One of the greatest things about God's goodness is that he never lets you down. That he is not a God of just the mediocre. He is the God that fulfills every single thing you could ever ask or imagine. In fact, the Bible says that when he provides, he gives it to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He provides manna on the ground, honey from the rock, water in the stone, Wherever we go, his spirit has gone before us and behind us. He has hemmed us in. So we're going to sing about that tonight. There's honey in the rock. Yes, Jesus. There's honey in the rock, water in the storm. Men are on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you've got this honey in the rock. Amen. Praying for a miracle, a mercy for the living well. Only you can satisfy. Hallelujah. Sweetness. On the mercy seat, now I'll taste it. It's not hard to see. You alone can satisfy. There's honey in the rock. 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 Where the spirit is, God's heat in the wilderness. You will always try to hide. Yeah. Honey in the rock, water in the snow. Never on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry, now I know. Everything I need, you got is honey in the rock. Oh, 
trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, to trust him yes. Yes. I'm so amazed by you Jesus so amazed by you, Jesus. Where would I be without your love? Where would I be without the cross? How I need you, Jesus. What is done? What is done? All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. We're going to sing that again. What He's done. What He's done. What He's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. Come on, what He's done. What He's done. What He's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what He still. I'll never forget. I'll never forget what He still. I'll never forget what he's done. I'll never forget what he's done. I'll never forget what Jesus has done. I could never forget. What is done? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace, twas grace that taught my heart to flee, and grace my fears relieved. How precious! How precious! that grace appeared the hour I first believed when we've been there 
Just take a moment right here and dwell in gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. For all the times I was distant, you still called me by name. For all the time I went running, you still called me by name for all the times i said no to you you still said yes to me for all the times my heart wondered your love still called to me what he's done on oh, what he's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. All oh, the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. Thank God. My future is heaven. I praise God for what he's done. Yes. Thank you, God. Because of your cross, we're victorious. Because of your cross, we're victorious. Wake up the tired who rest his feet to action. Restore the broken heart. It's time to dream again. For every time of season, the harvest finally coming. The young prophesying and the old living testimony. Somebody give a testimony. Let the church say amen. 
Baptize 
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a miracle service. Tonight, the Jesus who was by the Sea of Galilee is going to walk through this tent and cancer is going to die and paralysis is going to go away and bodies will be healed and California is going to know that Jesus is Lord. Somebody shout! Remain standing. I want to look at you for a moment. On a Wednesday night, this was supposed to be the off night. And right now it's the biggest night. Look at all of you. Every chair, pretty much every seat is gone. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I'm not going to use that term too often tonight, but I do want you to know that I believe in two genders. That's why I say ladies and gentlemen. I do. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. <laughs> but I want all of you to understand that last night, the body of Christ in this region did something they hadn't done in decades. They broke a sweat worshiping God. <laughs> in November, under a tent. So we want you to know we want you to know that this is going to be a supernatural night. You're going to hear the story of a healing that took place last night. You're going to hear a story tonight and you're never going to forget it. So I want you to be seated and fasten your seat belts, everybody. And you can look around and see that all the seats are taken. We have extra seats. If we have to set up more chairs, we've got room. Now, with absolute total listening, focusing your attention on what I'm going to say now. In this move of God that we are in in California, because that's what's going on, you have officially joined what we call the corridor of glory which is going up and down highway 99 from red bluff all the way down to laval road south of bakersfield god has chosen this region to heal the sick and save people in record numbers right now as you're seated here we're under a 20 thousand square foot tent right now. This is 20,000 square feet. We can handle upwards of 3,000 in this tent. But we're about to build one twice the size of this one. And in December, in January, it's going to Bakersfield, California on the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. But I want you to say September 9, 10, 11, 12, Los Angeles, Fairgrounds, with a new tent that will be 40,000 square feet. Somebody give God the glory. We're in a move of God. Come out, shout like you know you're in a move of God. Yep, you're in it. Many of you have a look on your face that is the most precious look and countenance of all. The I was kidnapped and dragged here by my Christian friend look. And I know you're wondering if you're going to end up with a shaved head selling flowers at the airport. But none of that is going to happen to you. The only thing that's going to happen to you is something that's real, joyful, peaceful, and eternal. God is going to get you and you're going to love every moment of it. Now, you've watched every night.
that I will immediately go into an altar call and I'll ask people to get saved. And remarkably, they've come to Christ by the hundreds every night. Now, tonight, you know that if you haven't been here, those of you that have been here know that we have not received one single offering in three meetings. No one has asked you for money in three meetings. You've never seen that before. You know, there's a, a paraphrase of a verse, wherever there are two or three evangelists, there will be an offering. <laughs> and we haven't done it. But we're testing something with you. That we're, our goal is to have a single night where the whole budget of the ministry comes in and that's the only time we talk about money at all. Now listen, it's not wrong to take offerings. Don't, e don't even go there with me. That's not what I'm saying. But I believe that the day is coming when the people of God will mature to the point where all that is needed will come in, whether it's asked for or not. That's what I'm saying. Now, was it a televangelist or a, a prosperity preacher that came up with the idea that giving would be multiplied back? Because a lot of people have written that. They said, those guys that say when you give, it'll be multiplied back, they're, they're into that prosperity cult. Well, it actually was Jesus who said that. He said in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, Give, and it shall be given to you. They will pour out into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement that you use when you do good for others, it will be measured back to you in return. Where do the offerings go wrong? Well, it's what you're giving to that is matters. This promise that I just read kicks in only when there is a specific thing you did with your money. And that is found in Mark chapter 10 and verse 29 and 30. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house, brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold. The multiplication is this. Give to Christ and the gospel. Give to Christ and the gospel. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm already almost over my time limit on this because I don't normally talk this long about it. But I want you to understand something. If you ask me what it is it about Mario Murillo Ministries that is being so blessed right now in every way, it's because we have committed ourselves to win souls and nothing else. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody said, but well, wait a minute, you've been commenting on politics a lot because the politicians are trying to stop me from winning souls. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm against the left because the left is against the gospel. That's why I say it. So somebody says, what are you fighting for? Freedom. I'm fighting against you to keep my freedom to preach the gospel. That's all it's about. Now, thank you. When you give to Christ and the gospel, it'll be multiplied to the point where it won't be any room left. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. And if you have a struggle with that, then you're going to have to look at Christ and ask it. But here's the part that no one ever reads. With persecution. <laughs> we, we leave that part out. Is that you were doing good till you got there. But you know what we've seen for the first time in my lifetime in California is systemic persecution of the church. 
And last night, when these people began to praise God under this tent, there was a spirit of heaviness that broke off of people and a joy literally manifested in this entire tent where the body of Christ was saying, you know what? We serve a good God, an awesome God, and, and we're going to end up together and we have a common hope. I want you to write a check. You make it out to MMM. That's all you need. MMM, it stands for Mario Murillo Ministries. We are a nonprofit corporation, but I don't want to be. You say, Mara, what are you saying? I want to get out of the government telling you that where your money should go. And I don't want the government telling me that because I'm a nonprofit, I am going to, I'm telling you, we are going to jump out of the 501c3 curse. We're going to jump out. We're leaving it. Are you? How many of you are still going to give if we're not, if there's no tax gift, if you don't get a receipt at the end of the year, you should say, you know what? I don't even care about that. I, you know what? I don't even want to mark it on my tax form. Why should you know what I'm doing with my money? It's none of your business. That Johnson Amendment is from the pit of hell. And we're getting out. You're going to see us. We're getting out. I'm done. Some of you will give by cash, and we want to furnish you with an envelope to do so. That way we can give you a receipt for your gift if you still want one. Third is if you are going to use a credit card, we made sure that the form is easy to fill out. We don't long, like a long and arduous thing here. Finally, you can text a gift to 91999. All you do is text MMM to 91999. And that's my opportunity to greet people. You know how many people were watching us last night on live stream? Over 22,000 people. I want to, wel let's welcome them right now. They're watching from all over America. Yep. And that was the last, the statistics as of early this morning. We don't know what it is right now, but the miracles they saw last night opened the floodgates. Now, if you're going to text it again, text MMM to 91999. And if you're out there, you do that. Wouldn't it be something if God paid for this crusade in one offering? Wouldn't that be something? I'm pretty excited. If you would like a white envelope for your cash gift or to use your credit card, raise your hand and we'll get you one real quick. The rest of you, again, write a check to MMM to win souls. I believe the day is coming that God is going to intervene in the American system of government by a mighty revival and reset the original purpose of this nation that was the founding fathers in that were greatly influenced by the teachings of Christ. You know, there was a day where children didn't learn how to read except by reading the Bible. That was the first book that many children in America read. How many of you like to see that day come back? Our children reading the word of God. Father, we thank you. Amen. I'm not praying over the offering. I'm actually just thanking God. Those of you that are our guests, just relax. We're not asking you for money. We want you to know that Christ paid for everything on the cross that pertains to you. We don't sell the gospel. We do not tell people they can buy a miracle. I believe every preacher that ever said that is going to stand before God to answer for saying such a blasphemous thing. To God be the glory. At the end of this offering, I'm going to preach a very brief sermon because 
the whole sermon is in two parts. One for those that need Christ and those that need healing. Many of you that are here need to understand something. I learned a long time ago that I am totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit and the way he works. I want you to look me in the eye a moment while I'm talking. We're going to get ready to take your offering. The Holy Spirit is hovering across this audience and he is working to prepare you to receive new life. You cannot imagine a day without drugs. Some of you, we have gone out of our way to make sure you would be here tonight from the streets and from areas, some of the homeless, some of the people victimized by modern life. We went out of our way to bring you in this tent. And right now, you cannot imagine a day where you have your own home or a day where you're not on drugs or a day where you don't want to kill yourself. But what you'll become by the end of this night will be so opposite what you're used to. You will look in the mirror and you will not recognize yourself. I want you to listen to me. Look at me. One day we did an outreach at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. And with the help of Victory Outreach, we had a massive turnout. Sonny Argonzoni himself said, we're going to help Mario. And we got members of every major gang. I was sitting in, the, in my dressing room of the shrine with 7,000 people and thousands of them were unsaved. And the LAPD broke into my dressing room and said, are you crazy? And I said, well, you know, it's common knowledge by now. It's not a secret. They said, do you realize what kind of violence could break out out there? I said, have you seen the ushers from Victory Outreach? Have you seen them? I said, there ain't nothing going to break out here. They'd be crazy. And I, so I went out, we gave the altar call, and a thousand young people came forward. Now watch. When I looked down at them, I was looking at the young ladies that came down. And I looked at them and I thought they were like 25, 30 years old. Then I said, close your eyes. Receive Jesus. And when they opened their eyes, I realized they were 14 and 15 years old. And Christ had changed their countenance in one prayer. And they went back to looking innocent. Tonight, I'm telling you, God's going to change people. How many of you know the greatest news in the world is that tonight drugs and sin and perversion cannot survive the love of God? Is that the news? Yeah. Man, am I excited. I'd like the ushers to take their battle stations, if you will. And I'm going to talk to you again during the offering, uh, the time we're receiving it. Father in heaven, it's all about souls. It's all about advancing the kingdom. That's all this offering is for. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I may be ready to have your money multiplied back to you because you gave to Christ and you gave to souls. Go ahead and receive the offering. So how many of you can listen and give at the same time? It's one level above walking and chewing gum at the same time. So we can do it. Just let me know. Say, Mar, I can do it. I can listen and give. When I was converted to Christianity, it was so total and so instant that within 14 days of my conversion, I had won 14 of my classmates to Christ. I made God a vow that I would win a soul every day. That's it. 
and it didn't matter to me what you thought, what you believed. If you sat next to me in science, that's your problem. If you're, if you're in the locker room and your locker's next to mine, that's your problem. Because I'm going to tell you about he who changed me, altered me, and made me a child of God. But then one day, not long after I was converted, I found out I was going to be a preacher. God called me. And what I didn't know, because my mom was backslidden, and when I came home from church in the inner city, and my mom, Christina, was in the kitchen, I walked up to her about 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday night. I said, Mom, I have been saved. And when I said the word saved, my mom collapsed to her knees and began sobbing and said, Jesus, forgive me. I'm going to serve you now with all my might. And you know what? To her dying day, she did. She lived to be 92, and she served God. But here's, here's what you need to know. My father left our family on the day I was born. He didn't want to be a father. He was too young. My mom had already had one child, and she was working in the sweatshops in San Francisco. In that time, it was 10 cents an hour. So she's a, she's a, she had me when she was 19 years old. And here she was living in poverty with her mom, my grandmother, and she'd already had my older brother. A year later, she had me. Doctor said while she was pregnant, you're too poor to have this child. I know some back alley place you can go to end this, terminate this pregnancy. She walked home trying to figure out how to live her life. And instead of aborting me, she put the Bible on her belly every night. And she said for nine months, every night, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but they are going to preach the gospel. And I'm having this child. Is that a story right there? Come on, you can clap better than that. Now I'm going to tell you something shocking. Everybody look this way. I'm going to tell you something shocking. Begins with the word compassion. I don't want anyone to move a muscle. I want you to look at me and I want you to listen to the word compassion. The Bible tells us that Christ was moved by compassion. That's the first word I'm going to use in this short part of my message. The second word is the word compel. Compassion and compel. I want to read the 35th verse of Matthew chapter 9. Then Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, I'm going to try this again. When he saw the multitudes, how many of you in this room believe that Christ can see things you and I cannot see? You know, I'm going to tell you, he sees that you are a terrified single mother. He sees that you're a young person growing up in a world where everything good has been taken. He knows the ones in this room that want to kill themselves. He feels something and sees something, and this is what the Bible said. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary, scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, 
The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest that he send out laborers into the harvest. I want to read another translation of just the last, a, a little part of that. He was moved with compassion. Charles Spurgeon said that Christ was so visibly overcome by compassion, he described it this way. What he saw not only affected his eyes, but his heart. He was overcome by sympathy. His whole frame was stirred with an emotion which put every faculty into forceful movement. He waded into sickness. He waded into disease. He invaded the misery of the humans that he saw, the people. That's the way he was. Someone asked me, why is preaching powerless today? Because the preachers have no compassion. They're not moved by it. They're not broken by it. They don't look at an audience. Too many of our young preachers see them as a check, as a statistic. But you are not a check. You are not a statistic. Do you know that you are so loved by God that God the Father bankrupted heaven so he could save you? Am I preaching yet? So Spurgeon said, this compassion overpowered him. He had no resistance to it. It affected every fiber of his being. And Spurgeon went on to say that Matthew had to invent a word to explain Jesus. You see, it's translated in the English, compassion. But in the original language, it's actually a word that was created by Matthew himself. He added it to the vocabulary. But we find it as compassion. But what Matthew's trying to say is that it was such a profound power. When I was young, I had the honor of picking up David Wilkerson at LAX and driving him to a crusade. I never met a man more broken for the lost. There was a day when ministry was totally different than it is today. Totally different. David would weep. He couldn't help himself when he saw a drug addict. So every month, I got to be with David Wilkerson. And every month, I would be at the Shrine Auditorium watching Miss Coolman. And she, those, you saw the awe that went for those of that are older and remember her. The love of God that used to come out of that woman. Jesus feels your heart. You know when the politician says he feels your pain? He's lying. You know when Dr. Phil says he feels for you? That's nothing. The bottomless, limitless, undeniable passion that God weeps when you weep. God has wept over your life. When you didn't know it and you didn't feel it, Christ was there saying, if only you would have let me in, I would have stopped that tragedy. I would have ended your pain. I remember when I was saved. I remember when I was saved. I'm telling you that I remember the very moment that it was approximately 8.59, almost 9 o'clock on a Sunday night on October the 4th. And I felt that somebody who would never leave me, never lie to me, never reject me, never abandon me, had come into my life. And I had discovered the greatest truth of the entire universe. That the one who loves me the most is also the one who has the most power in the universe. And I thought, 
How wonderful is that? The one who loves me the most has the most power. No devil, no sickness, no tragedy, no hatred, no darkness, no vileness, no devil in hell can separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Somebody help me preach for God. When the church quit acting like God loved them is when we lost our influence. Because it was that simple fact that we acted as though we were loved. Somebody loves me. Somebody loves me. Why do I know that when it looks dark and bad and impossible that I'm going to be okay because somebody loves me? Now I'm going to stop. And I'm going to tell you that this compassion is moving you right now toward Christ. Right now, you've hardened your heart. You've hardened your life. You've done so many things to defend yourself against loving. Well, I don't want to love God. That's the last thing I want to do is love God. I don't trust anybody. I've been hurt and lied to. Not only that, I've hurt people myself. This is a deceptive lying culture that we live in. But let me tell you something. I mentioned it last night. I'm going to mention it again. There was nobody with a harder heart than Matthew, the man who wrote this about his compassion. The man who invented the word that we are looking at, compassion, was a tax collector. Jaded, broken, hardened, petrified by the love of money, had killed every last spark of humanity. And when Christ headed toward his table, all of the audience was watching, wondering, what is he going to say to that man? Is he going to rebuke him for betraying his own people? Is he going to scold him as only as he did the Pharisees and Sadducees? And everybody was shocked because when he got there, he said two words, follow me. And when he said those words, the love came out. The compassion came out. Suddenly he realized there's something about this Jesus that I have to have. Then he went to the cross. Sometimes I like to tell you that being when Christ was on the cross, and young preacher, look at me. You always want to preach on the cross. You say, well, Mara, people don't want to hear it. People don't know what they want to hear until the Holy Spirit comes on them. And that's when you preach the truth. How many of you love the cross of Jesus Christ? How many of you love that Jesus went to the cross for us? How many of you believe in preaching the cross today? I believe it. Now you're making me go too long. It was President Woodrow Wilson who said, the proof that the gospel is divine is the preaching it has survived. After all we've done to it, it has survived. Of all the lies we've done, all the pre presentations that were wrong. Am I preaching yet? Is anybody getting anything out of this? So I'm going to tell you. The thief on the cross did not have a good gospel presentation. The Christ that he saw was a wounded, dying animal, wheezing. He wasn't delivering the eloquent words of the Sermon on the Mount. And you say, well, Jesus, he must have heard him at some point. He was on death row. He never got to hear him. But somehow through his own pain and somehow through the pain of Christ, the power of Jesus came through anyway. Imagine at that depth of the Christ being tortured and bloody and beaten and crucified, his eyes still projected a compassion that could save a man on death row dying right next to it. 
made him say something he never thought he'd say. He said to his partner, quit cursing this man. We deserve what we're getting, but he's innocent. And then he looked at Jesus and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Now I'm going to stop you right now and tell you. You are like that thief on the cross that's seen the underbelly of religion. You've seen Christianity beaten, misrepresented, commercialized, and hypocrites. You say, Mar, I won't go to church. Those people are hypocrites. Well, if your dentist was a hypocrite, would you stop brushing your teeth? Now I'm going to finish with one other word, compel. I want to read the Bible. In verse 23 of Luke 14, then the master said to his servant, go to the highways and the hedges and urge and constrain them to yield and come in. What you're about to hear is very controversial. Is your seatbelt fastened? I don't agree with those pastors that make getting converted a polite experience. I don't believe in it. I don't believe you this, this idea here. If you want to get saved, look at me. Look at you. So to everyone, close your eyes. And if you want to get saved, just look at me. You don't have to walk up here. And then they say, if you decide you want to at least experiment with Jesus, talk to us in the back. An embarrassing, polite, and totally like this is a kind of a not a good thing to do. That's the projection. The Bible doesn't say that. You know that I'm not going to give a long altar call tonight, but I have the right to. I have the right to. You say, well, that's not scriptural. You need to go to Acts chapter 2. It says with many other words. Peter compelled them, saying, save yourself from this doomed generation. Now, I have the right to go on. I could go on right now. I have the right to erode your resistance to God for an hour if necessary. I do, but I won't. I'm not even going to do it five more minutes. Is anybody here? So you woke up one morning and you're going to find out where he said, compel. What does it mean? What does it mean? I'm going to tell you right now. You woke up one morning and there was an Amber Alert and you saw a picture of a 10 year old girl. You saw her face, her eyes and her hair color. And by some strange coincidence about sunset, you were driving by a park and there she was on a swing by herself and you don't know why her kidnapper isn't with her. By the same token, there's only one reason that you're sitting under this tent is you've already overcome the power of the devil because Satan would never have given you permission to be here right now. So you've already won one battle by sitting where you are. He's out there saying, I thought I had them. I thought I controlled them. What are they doing listening to this crazy man? So what are you going to do? You're going to pull your car over. You're going to walk over to that little girl in the swing and do modern preaching. I know that you are offended by men and I know that you think I'm strange, but I'd like you to pray and consider the thought of going home. You might say something else. Little girl, do you want me to go and get someone for you? I'm kind of busy right now and uh, church has gone a long time and our best tithers are not gonna tithe anymore if we go past noon. Am I preaching yet? And so, you see that little girl and you use the word compel. Look at me, young lady. You are getting in my car 
and you're going to get to the police station and tonight you're going to sleep in your own bed and you're going to be safe in the arms of your mom and dad. That's an altar call. Close your eyes. I went too long. It's my fault. Don't tell me you're going to go home and think about this. You don't think about, should I jump out off the railroad tracks when the locomotive is about to crush me? You don't think about, oh, I need time to consider the cost. You're paying a debt daily in emotion and in freedom and insanity. You're paying an, an expensive price that makes discipleship to Christ look like nothing. That's why he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light because compared to what the people looked like to him when he had compassion, you cannot go on the way you're going right now. No, you can't fake being a Christian anymore. You got to know him. You can't let that hardness and bitterness and brokenness and pain burn a hole in your soul. No, sir, I won't let you. I won't let you out of my influence right now. If you're broken, if you're sad, if you're addicted, if you're hurting, there is a God, there is a Christ ready to stand up strong. Get the devil off your back and turn you around. So I said, I have the right to go on for an hour. Because Peter said, Bible says in Acts 2, with many other words, he compelled them. Mario, I, I don't want to live in pain anymore. I don't want to live with my past and my guilt and the weight of life. I don't want it anymore. I've got to believe that my life has purpose, that my future is assured because of Jesus. I've got to believe that. I've got to believe that tonight, maybe, all the happiness I've seen in other people that seems to have escaped me, that maybe I'm allowing it by my own choice to not let Jesus control me. In a moment, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. If not enough people raise their hand, I'm gonna go after you anyway. If you decide, well, I'm not sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going till you're sure because you cannot leave this tent without Jesus. And you cannot leave this tent thinking you're a Christian when your life says otherwise and everything about you says that you have not yet found the power of Jesus. Mara, I don't want to be lonely anymore. I don't want to be bewildered. All these words that I want to find in very quickly that we find It says they were bewildered, harassed, distressed, dejected, and helpless. That's what he saw when he looked at him. God's looking at you right now. He sees where you feel bewildered. He sees what you're afraid of. He sees what's distressing you and making you dejected and feel helpless. And he wants to. Jump in and turn it all into a miracle. Mario, pray for me. Pray for me right now that I will do the right thing. I'll do the best thing. I'll do the only thing that in this sick, perverted, and hard world is only one solution is for God to be in me, the power of God to be in me, the peace of God. That's what I need. It's what I want. If you'll let me pray for you to have a new life 
and to have peace and joy and forgiveness and power to live in this dark time because of Christ. If you'll let me pray for you to become a new person, raise your hand so I can see it right now. Everyone that wants a new life, whether you raised your hand or not, stand to your feet right now. Get up on your feet. Get up on your feet all over this tent. Get up. Get up. Stand up. Remain standing, remain standing. Close your eyes, everybody in the room. You brought someone tonight, they're sitting right beside you. They need a new life. That's why they came. That's why they answered your invitation. I wanted you to do this very much with respect and tenderness. Say, look, lean over to them and say this in their ear. If you're willing to stand for Christ right now, I'll stand with you. I'll support you in your decision. I'll do it now. If somebody is doing that for you right now, get up on your feet. You get them to stand up. You compel them right now and win them in the name of Jesus. Do it now. Do it now. Every time I've said it, somebody stood up. They're standing up everywhere. They're standing up. Come on. I've told the devil, I'm going to get them all tonight. I'm going to get every one of yours, and they're going to become his. Everyone that Christ died for in this under this tent, we're going to get them all. Say, Mara, I need to stand up. Nobody, I didn't come. I came alone. Well, you are going to have the privilege of Jesus himself standing beside you saying, stand up. So Mario, I belong on my feet right now. You know, that's the story of my life. I've always come so close. And then I stop. Get up right now and say, this is it. I'm breaking the cycle. I'm going to stand up. Stand up right now. Just get up. That's it. Now, everyone who is standing, find the nearest aisle. Walk up here to the front. Come right now. Come from everywhere. Come all of you. Come from here. Come from there. Come to Christ. I'm compelling you to come to Jesus. Young and old, rich and poor, black, white, brown, and yellow. All of you, come. 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 I think the army of God ought to be rejoicing right now. You know, there's some of you that still need to come. Come, get up. Get up and walk down here and join this group. This is the blessing of God. This is not the work of a man. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Put your hand over your heart, all of you. Say this with me out loud. Mean it. Make it your words from your heart. Lord Jesus, like the thief on the cross, I see you dying for me. I see that you see my suffering. You know my heavy burden. Take this load off of my life and let me know you as the only true God. I need Jesus to live in me and I need to live by his faith and his power. And I ask in the name of Jesus that my sins will be forgiven 
and washed away by the shed blood. I ask you, Jesus, to transform me. Make me into a new creation. Take the devil's power away from me. Let me know that I'm going to heaven and not hell. This is the day that I call myself a child of God, redeemed, saved, born again, set free, and I will always be yours. Now, I know this crowd wants to shout, but don't. I'd like you that are here to look at me a moment. There are many, many times that I've done this, but I feel a very special conviction of the Holy Spirit on you. Some of you are very deeply being dealt with by God, and it's just and it's right. And you wonder, a thousand questions are going through your mind. How am I going to live from this point on? How am I going to live up to Christianity? No, it's what's going to live through you. The Bible says in Philippians, it is God who is at work in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. What you're going to do is to give Jesus his rightful opportunity to influence and lead your life. It begins with one step, one day at a time. So our first step is going to be to recreate the miracle of the Red Sea. So let's move on one side or the other of this spot right there. Make sure you stay with whoever you're with if you brought someone. And when I give you the signal, I want you to turn around and face the audience because now you're infinitely more beautiful than you were a minute ago. So turn around and face the audience. Now hold your applause, hold your applause. Start marching down that aisle and down this aisle to Christians who are waiting to pray for you and everyone that came with you, nobody's leaving. We're going to be back in this tent in a few minutes. Head down there right now. Head down there, all of you on this side. Church, get up. Welcome. Welcome your new brothers and sisters into the kingdom of God. How glorious is this? And we have the worship team come to the stage. Everybody remain standing. Remain standing. Look at the man of God. You're about to hear a song. How many of you in the last few minutes have relived your own salvation? Have revisited the joy of your salvation? I've asked Rachel and the worship team from Destiny Christian Church right here in Roseville to sing a song that we're all going to sing, but I want you to listen to them sing it then at the appropriate time, we're going to turn into a choir that's going to make heaven jealous. Yes, we are. But listen to the words and then join in. Ooh, I was a wretch. Oh, I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. My sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sights, and then you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross where you paid 
the dead I owe. Broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of God. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. You brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You took my sin, you took my sin, laid it tight. The sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again, and now dead, and now dead has no sting, and this life has no end. So Sing it. Glory to his name. There at the cross. Oh, there to my heart was. 
the blood of white. I think you could sing that little chorus again, even better. Glory to his name. Sing it out. Thank you. Thank you to Rachel and the team. Thank you all. And thank you, Ralph, for continuing to play that melody with everybody closing your eyes for a moment. One day in one of my crusades, a woman forgot. She forgot because a song like this got hold of her. How many of you got to admit this song, thank you Jesus for the blood applied, it got to you. Raise your hand, did it get to you? Did it touch your spirit? She was dying of terminal cancer and she forgot because of a hymn that we were singing, she got lost in Christ and forgot that she had come there to be healed and was only thinking of one thing. I'm enjoying the presence of God. Amen. Raise your hands to God. Pray in the language of the Holy Spirit and understand that your sickness, your disease, your problems should not be uppermost on your mind right now. You should not be thinking, oh, I've got to receive. You should be thinking, what a mighty God I serve. How much I love him. How many of you are feeling how much you love Jesus right now? Pray in the language of the spirit. Wave your hand at me. Say, Mara, I just love him so much. I just love him. The Bible called him the desire of ages. He's what's everybody, everybody's always wanted. He is the complete thing that humanity needs. Just love on him right now. Just praise him. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Many people don't realize that while they're loving God, they're being healed. They don't realize it. But I want you to be seated. I'm gonna tell you a story. Boy, is there a presence of God in this tent? Is there a presence? You know, I don't know how you can handle it. I don't know how you're not just going glory to God or hallelujah, love it, Jesus. How many of you just want to tell him you love him right now? How many of you just want to love him? Glory to God. I don't know if I'm gonna to get to finish what I had to say tonight. I'm not sure. My dear sister, right there on the aisle, you're wearing glasses, blonde hair, look like you have a white collar on your coat. Would you stand up for a moment? You notice how quickly she stood up? 
you need healing. You're not really thinking about it all that much right now, but you need a healing. And the way it's going to come to you is going to be very interesting. You know, a lot of people are assuming that when the supernatural begins, it should always be bombastic and like, I, I, I need a choir to work it up. But it, it's the power of God, dear. It's all over you. you. You feel it in your hands. And you know, there's a reason. I want you to go forward two rows. It's a late stop right there. See that lady to your right with a striped top? She is the one who's being healed. Well, stand up. I don't know. There's some kind of reunion going on down there. So you know each other. Wow. But see, that's why this is perfect. Now, it's important, my dear, in the striped top, that the audience know we've never met before. I mean, we've not set this up ever, right? But you're being healed. And this pain is not coming back. And I'm going to start by having you put your hand on your forehead. That's healing power in your head and neck. And that's been terrible. That's been violent, throbbing pain that has tortured you. And it's healed in Jesus' name. Hold your applause. I'm glad you have your hand on her spine. That's what's being healed is her spine. She has, a, she has a disorder in her body that affects her nerves. And what's coming up to her head and going down to her feet is centered in her spinal cord. And Jesus is healing her right now. Now, dear, you can take your hand off your forehead. Put your arms out to your side. Balance, coordination, sight, all of it has been restored. Your knees, your back have been healed. Now, I want you to help me with this. The idea of moving quickly, stepping quickly, is very difficult for you because of balance and pain. But all of it is gone. And you've got a partner, a jogging partner, well, a power walking partner. You know, I found out that jogging was not of God. It, it said that, that the wicked run when no one's chasing him. So I thought, I'm not doing that anymore. Why am I running? Nobody's chasing me. No. Do this. Is that wonderful? Come on. Come on. Just, uh, come on. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Well, you know what? You know, I was wrong. I guess it does get bombastic every once in a while. What a miracle. Now, look at her. She's run all the way around this tent. New legs, new back, new neck, and knees. How many of you are ready to hear a wonderful testimony of healing? that happened last night, are you? Would you stand up? The, the couple that I'm looking for, oh no, just the couple I'm looking for. Somebody help me get them. Where are they? You're right there, stand up. Come, come with me. I'm gonna make you come all the way up here because people clap real loud. Look, look at her. Oh, 
You see, we're real rehearsed and polished around here, aren't we? This woman last night received a life-changing healing in her body. And I think all of you need to know. Now, I'm going to talk to you, sir. Come on over here. Now, you both have served Christ on the mission field. Amen. And you were seated down there last night over on the side. And, and I'm going to ask you, sir, what was wrong with your wife's body? My wife had just gotten through with a broken ankle that the doctor said had a gigantic blood clot that shot up to her brain. She had pain all along the hair, and then it broke free and attacked her heart. And then it exploded and filled her lungs. And the doctor said, you should have died three times. That's what you said. And last night, you heard me say, Absolutely. what did I say to you? Three times, you won't, the doctor said you almost died. And that was told to you in the month of June. Yes. Those precise words. Yes. 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 The exact yes. words. Did you hear? Is anybody here? Hello? <laughs> the blood clot exploded, exploded. Yes. from a broken ankle. Yes. That ankle was broken. Yes. Feels pretty good right now. Oh, yes. yeah. oh is the devil in pain? Stay right there. Come over here, Gabe, right there. Okay. Who is seeing this right now? <laughs> uh, hundreds of thousands of people will see this, that's for sure. <laughs> he, he is. Uh, okay. Tell them how they're seeing it. Tell them who you are. They'll see it on all their phones all across the world, uh, 50 countries everywhere. <laughs> it, that's the power of God on him. I didn't mean for that to get started. He has over 1.2 million subscribers to his site. And they are, they are absolutely seeing a miracle right now. I'm telling you, revival is at the door. Oh, I'm telling you, the devil. You better get excited. Is this amazing? Yeah, oh, of course. About a year and a half ago, Brother Mario came to a church here in Roseville at Abundant Life. My wife had been feeling is like a tumor all the way across her. She could feel it. It was bulging out there. And this man of God spoke to her and said, God is healing you right now. And within moments, it disappeared. You mean to tell me? Thank you, Lord. Uh, hold the phone here. Now, this is the second time. No, no, we don't. Disclaimer, I didn't, I had no idea, but I got to get to this. The bone has been recreated in your ankle totally. And the blood clot. And I, and I told you. The dizziness was from the eloquist. That's like seven hundred dollars a you know a pill. I'm telling you, God said, get off of it. So what? What did? What was the word that? All of that it you, was true. One hundred percent accuracy according to the word of God okay. through you. And and of course we give Christ all the glory. Amen. But but I told you about your heart. Everything. I told you about your blood, your ankle, and her childhood. And your childhood, three years of age, she wandered out in the street and a car 
started racing down the street and almost ran her over, but a dog run over, jumped over the fence, shoved her out of the way, and died in her place. And he said, he said last night, the devil even tried to kill you when you were a little child. And I was born in Bakersfield, California, and I just went back home, and God brought us here and right to that area. Well, let me tell. All right. Now, now. Wait a minute. Stay away from the edge. Don't let the Holy Ghost throw you over the side. Well, let me, let me tell you, folks. Before I came to Roseville, God told me this would be our greatest crusade. He said this one would be the great. I even put it out, didn't I? How many of you remember me telling you that here we would see a medically confirmed miracle that would start a revival? Well, you know what? You have just obligated yourself. In January, you're coming down to Bakersfield to give your testimony in our 10 crusade there. And a bunch of gang members are going to get saved. To God be the glory. Now. Yeah, well, see, then you're trained. We are. So. You know, about for a nanosecond, I almost felt sorry for the devil. Because this is brutal. This is not just a blessing. This is a brutal miracle right here. All right. So the ankle, the lungs, the heart, the brain, it's all healed. She had a separated sternum a from fair. another accident. Three accidents. Accidents That's right. I, You know, I'm not, ride, I'm not riding in a car with you. Uh, because, you know, you will come out all right, but I might not. But I'm... Uh, but you are healed in your bones. And I couldn't breathe. My respiratory, I had um, uh, pneumonia for three times. Everything that you said, walking pneumonia. I had COVID and, and supposed to you. die. You told me all that. That's I couldn't right. breathe. That's right. Never did I miss one service playing and worshiping God. God gave me his breath. And now you can breathe. Yes. Yes. Total breath. Yes. How it happened was, how it happened. You really want to know? We got to the second level here. Way over there, I couldn't see you. There was posts in this, everything. It's at the end of the service. And and I just reached up because you said, acid reflex, somebody over here. I didn't see it, I just heard it. And I said, Lord, I want them all in the house to be healed of acid reflex. Yeah. But I raised my hands and I said, I am healed because of those medicines. Amen. I am healed of acid yeah. reflex. Yeah. I received it. Yeah. The anointing upon you fell upon me. My God. As I pressed into that anointing and touched God. And you saw, and you were closing the service. We were about to dismiss when I looked down at her, and the whole story opened up to me. Can you imagine the devil? Saying they're almost done. I'm home free. You know what I'm telling you? This is absolutely something for all of us to rejoice and to thank Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. I might give another altar call now. I might give another altar call right now. Well, I'm not going to give an altar call, but I am going to do something over here. You're right on the front row wearing a white sweater. And I'm going to tell you something. God's going to use you. Don't worry about the camera. If you ever see a camera coming there, this is not MSNBC. 
This is the MMM. <laughs> and uh, this helps people that are watching by live stream to see a miracle actually when it happens. Would you stand up, my dear? Now, I'm going to tell you that it isn't just for you. You're going to be healed by laying hands on someone. And they also have a white coat on. So turn to your left. Go down. Stand up, dear. Now. They told you you wouldn't live. They told you this was the end. They told you you didn't have much time. Isn't that true? It's true. They put an expiration date on you and we're tearing it off right now. That lady that you got your arm around, she's tiny, but she's powerful. I want you to put your hand on her stomach right there. The fire of God is greater than chemotherapy. It doesn't damage tissue. It doesn't remove your hair. But the fire of God will reach in and take care of death itself. God is touching you and sparing your life right now. And from this day on, from this moment on, you will be a Lazarus. You will live knowing that you cheated the grave, that death and terminal illness were overruled by the power of God. I declare that you are healed in the name of Jesus and your miracle has happened right now. I need you to shout right now. I need this. We need to shout. You're going to go to your doctor. You're going to have a testimony. You're going to be an absolute miracle from God. Give the Lord one more praise. You may be seated, both of you. You may be seated. It's so good to see John and Joyce Caruso right here on the front row. Precious friends of mine for decades. And I'm calling attention to you because you just had a, 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 you had a birthday, right? Should I tell them? 90. Yeah. But doesn't he look great? It's all, he looks great because of that woman he married. But I called it to your attention because I wanted to move over to this side. And I wanted all of you to bear with me a moment. How many of you feel the presence of God? Do you? All right. In this area right now, in the second row, it's a gentleman in a black shirt with a lady that God has done a miracle for who got up and ran last night like she was in the Olympics. And I need you both to stand right now. Just stand right in the second row. Go ahead. You know, uh, this was as much a healing as this precious sister right here. That was a healing last night. But now it's your turn to be used of God. You understand what I'm saying? That man that you're holding is being healed by the power of God. He's receiving a miracle. Take your right hand, put it over his heart.
I'm going to tell you a story, sir. One day you began to feel weak and you didn't know why. One day you were outside. I see it by the spirit. You were outside. You were doing something. I don't know, gardening, but you were outside. Doing something you've always done when all of a sudden you started to feel weak and it accelerated. Then you went and got checked, which we men don't like to do. And you found out there's an abnormal thing happening in your chest, your knees, your back, all of this. You see, sir, people wonder, should we as the ministers of the gospel be bold? And God is going to open two valves in his heart. God is going to straighten cartilage in his knees. God is going to heal his lower back, ringing in his ear. The inability to breathe freely when you sleep. Wave your hand at the people so they'll know I'm telling the truth. Not, not like this, brother. All the way up. We're Pentecostal. Is anybody getting blessed right now by the moving of the Spirit? We love you, Lord. He has new knee, new heart, new valves, new back. And it's moving all across the audience now. I'm going to take back what I just said. He is moving across the audience. There's no it. It's he. Jesus said, I will not leave you without comfort. The Holy Spirit was not a parting gift. He wasn't a door prize to console us for the absence of Christ. Jesus said this about the Spirit of God. I have to leave because Christianity's next level is being impeded by my physical presence on earth. If I go to my Father, I'm going to unleash on the world a force that is absolutely astonishing. And he will envelop the world and convict all of humanity at one time. He'll go in advance of church leadership and apostles. In the last 2,000 years, the Holy Spirit has built churches by the tens of thousands, reached millions, given us sermons, strategies, and tactics. When Christianity came up against the brick wall of modern culture, men and women were filled, baptized in the Holy Spirit and received supernatural wisdom to break through. We watched missionaries go from one end of this world to the other because of the Holy Spirit. In a lowly stable in Los Angeles, the power of Azusa Street was not that the glory was in the room, but who was sent out from it. The place could, couldn't even seat 700 people. And now it's influenced tens of millions around the world. Oh, that we would return to dependency on the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again. If only we would give up our church program, get on our face and say, Jesus, give us the anointing. Give us our opportunity one more time. Let's get up on our feet. Start praying in tongues. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to fall on all of you and give you a fresh baptism of fire. Come on. Out loud. Out loud. Oria rebe satala boria rokoya. We the loboria rete yala lebe saya. On the lebe ki arades in Dorodi or Rokoy. You're being healed right now. You're being healed. God is healing cancer, He's healing diabetes and arthritis and epilepsy, He's healing the ravages of COVID. He's taking away sickness. He's, your pain is leaving your body. 
and you're not even asking for healing right now and he's doing it. You're asking for the power of the Holy Spirit. Come upon me, Holy Spirit, and give me a fresh baptism. You can pray even better than that. You can pray better than that. You know, God is trying to give you a fresh anointing. God is trying to revolutionize you so that the miracles you're seeing here are going to happen in your pulpit, in your church, through your preaching. God is doing that right now. He's removing all your fear, all your doubt, all your unbelief. He's removing it all. Pray louder over here to the far left. You need to pray louder. On the right, you say, Mara, there's nothing holy about volume. It's about surmounting our flesh. It's about bringing our voice and our tongue under the subjection of the Holy Spirit to pray in a language that will glorify him. Look to Jesus, not a man. Look to Jesus and not a man. Mi arebe sendolo gori araba. Hindolo gori areke seya. Wondera didi arese tende didio. Maybe you don't want a fresh era of power. Maybe you don't need a next level. Maybe you're satisfied with where you are. But I want those of you that are not satisfied to ignore the others and press in and say, God, I would be anointed. I want another level of power. And now, I want to look at you and I want you to listen to the man of God. Do you believe in the words of Christ? How many of you believe that the Bible is more important than prophetic words coming from some man or woman? How many of you believe that our faith and our direction should be anchored in the scriptures based on the word of God? So I'm going to stand here. I'm going to look at you. These signs will follow them that believe. We know it. We've heard it. Revival isn't a matter of new information. Revelation is not new knowledge. It's God detonating what you already knew, but you never realized it. We got to go back. We've got to bring back rallies where people receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We got to dedicate nights in church for everyone to get filled with the Spirit. Right now, Pentecostal denominations, so called, half of their pastors do not speak in tongues. That's how far we've fallen. We have got to reverse that trend. We got to get back to the fire of God. We got to get back to the gifts of the spirit being demonstrated in the church services. There's no, 
there's no point in being jealous of me when God wants to give you power. If anything, you should look at me and say, if he can do it, I can do it. If he can surrender to God and die to self, surely I can do the same. Now, are you ready? I want everyone that needs a healing in your body to put your hand in the air. And you're going to say, some of you, that I'm crazy, right? Now, you're going to say I'm crazy. I'm aware of multiple illnesses all around the... I know a lady over there that has a skin rash that is terrifying her. She doesn't even have her hand up. She doesn't think that that illness is worthy of her fighting to get a miracle. But I just told you, now put your hand up, sister. Thank you. Over here. Two cases, heart disease. One a man, the other a woman. A person right here, neuropathy in your feet that hurts so bad, you can't, you can't take it anymore. Am I right? Boy, I tell you, one time I got so mad, I left the stage and went and grabbed him, and I said, it's you. <laughs> I'm just past the point. I mean, you know, after a certain age, you ain't got time to mess around with people. And I'll tell you what that age is, any age. My dear, you're wearing glasses, you got blonde hair, you're shorter than your husband. You're right there. Put your hand on his chest. That man's being healed by the power of God. Brother, I want you to open your heart. I want you to open your heart to God. You, you're such a good man. You've been a good man. You've been a generous man. This is not how your story ends, sir. You're not going to end up with a coronary. You're not going to die from a heart attack. You're going to outlive virtually everyone in this room. God's healing your ear, your heart, your back, your knees. And it's power that's flowing through you. Look at me, please, my dear, in the, in the maroon, you have your right hand, you have a maroon coat on. You know you're being healed. This is coming in the time of year where you feel it the most. Because you love Christmas, don't you? Yeah, you do. You love to decorate. Put your hands in the air. Yeah. Your hands are being healed. Move your fingers right now. Put your hand on your forehead. Now, do you know that many, oh, my dear, you have your right hand up, white sweater, standing next to a man in orange. Is that a shirt, a t-shirt? Yeah. Put your hand on that man's chest. That man is being healed right now. Now hold it. Hold the applause. This beautiful woman, the devil has tried to attack her about your life. Am I going to be alone without this man? And I'm telling you by the spirit, no, you are not. And God is extending this man's life. And he's not just touching his heart and his lungs. But the blood vessels that are going to his brain are being healed by the power of God. How can I know this? This is the most tender scene. You should see this. This is a miracle, sir. Ears, brain, heart, lungs, back, all being healed. And one of the ways you're going to know that God has visited you, sir, is that there is a project that you didn't finish. It's a big project. It is an awesome project. And now you're getting a whole new era for your life. Strength to finish what you're on this earth to do. And that's true of many of you. Put your hand in the air if you need healing. How many of you would love to hurt the devil if you could? Let me, let me show you how. Say, I'm going to be healed right now. No, 
over here. I want to hear it. I'm going to be healed right now. You know, you've been you've been attacking me, devil, but it's over now. I'm going to be your worst nightmare now. You ought to buy my shirt. It says I'm the Christian the devil warned you about. Because you're it now. Lay hands on somebody that has their hand in the air. Lay, lay your hand. They're pr praying for healing. Lay hands on them. How many of you believe that God could heal 800 people right now if he had to? We're not going to wander into the flesh. We're not going to make fleshly promises. We're not going to make grandiose statements that later on will be viewed on YouTube or something, making us look like idiots. We're sober. We're right. We're talking to God. I bind cancer in the name of Jesus. Agree with me that the person you're praying for is being healed by the power of God. Agree that they're being healed right now. This is not a hopeless prayer. This is not, this is not just pity. This is compassion and power. And God is moving. God is moving and healing. Cancer of the stomach. Cancer of the throat. Cancer of the lungs. There's power. There's healing. There's mighty, mighty power. How many of you feel Christ's healing power in your body? Wave your hand at me right now. And I bind fear in the name of Jesus. Somebody just found out days ago that they found, they told you you had cancer just days ago. And it isn't just the cancer, it's the fear that's come with that report. But I'm telling you, the power of God is on your body. He wouldn't alert me to the fact that you just found this out. But there are miracle after miracle after miracle in this room. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a night. What a night. Please be seated for a moment. I want to talk to you about tomorrow night. How many of you believe that these crowds are a demonstration of the power of God in this area? How many of you understand? This, you know, everywhere I went around Roseville, I saw... Uh, Porsches, Land Rovers, BMWs, and uh, Cadillacs and everything else, and Mercedes. This is not the ghetto, folks. I don't know if, if anyone's broken it to you, but that's where I live. That's where I minister. Those are the people I go after. But how many of you know when people are dead, you can have a corpse over here that was run over by a train and another died in its sleep. One is not deader than the other. And uh, there's some very attractive and wealthy cadavers in this region. But they needed God and they've been getting saved. How many of you are grateful for that? Are you? Many things that I've learned in my life one of them is the most difficult, is when do you end a service? I have ended them too soon as much as I've ended them too late. And there is a, there's a supernatural wisdom to knowing the power and the reason that you're closing out a meeting. Sometimes you need to get an army all excited and then inflict them on the community. 
where they want to stay and express their excitement in the tent, they need to go out there and like have that look like, man, have I got a story for you. There was this woman that came to the tent and the man of God told her everything that was wrong with her and it all left. How many of you know that's good news right now? Yeah. How many of you believe that this region needs good news right now? Yeah, we do. We have one more night. One more night. Whoever you're going to invite, you're going to bring. I looked at the TV guide. Everything on tomorrow night is stupid. <laughs> Not just bad, stupid. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to lose IQ points if you watch it. Because that's what it's designed to do. So, it's a no-brainer for you to come tomorrow night. It is absolutely essential that we close this out. You say, Mara, how can we get more people in here? We have chairs. I'll pray that we don't have to open the flaps because some of you are not climatized. But in Hanford, California, we had all the flaps open and it was 38 degrees. And they were in there for four hours. So don't tell me a thing about you. We got you these fancy heaters. The only thing we didn't have is the cappuccino machine in the back. We even have high class ladies room. Did you see that? Hot water in a, in a portable bathroom. They've been cleaning it. Man, you're spoiled, 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 spoiled. So it's time for you to become a Marine for Christ. I want you to come back tomorrow night and bring people with you. We'll, we'll make room for hundreds more. Let's close this out and it explodes. We have the devil on the carpet. Let's finish him. Let's finish him. How many of you have not yet bought your copy of my new book, which is entitled, Do Not Leave Quietly? You know, that book made it to the top 12 of all Christian books that are out there. We're talking about all of the heavyweights. It made it there. They're, they're getting ready to sell books right there. That's, they're not mad at me. So, it's normally $20. It is 15 and you will learn how the average person becomes a force against evil. It's a strategy, a plan, not just an inspirational book. You'll love it. Get your copy while you can. Last night we sold quite a number, but thank God we brought a lot. Now, how many of you were blessed by what God did tonight? How many of you were truly blessed? Were you? Stand up then. If you were blessed, stand up. Before I came, look at me. Before I came to Roseville, and my wife will tell you this. I am not one of those guys that gets up and says something. I fear God. And when the Lord tells me something, I ask him, do you want me to share this or keep it to myself? People are having all kind of crazy statements about heaven and here and that, and they've been everywhere. And I'm telling you, it's, it's too much pizza is what it is. It's not revelation, it's indigestion. And I want you to know that I'm not one of those people. I am a man that's in the Bible, in prayer. I'll walk away from the ministry the minute Christ says to do it. Because my devotion is to Jesus and my family. That's where I want to be. 
But I want you to understand that before I came here, God said that three things going to happen while you're in Roseville. He told me about a church that was going to go to their next level. He told me that there was a church in Roseville that is about to become a magnet for souls and will go to its next level. What church is that? Look at me. You think I'm stupid? I'm not going to say that yet. If God says, say it, I will. But I'm telling you, God said that's going to happen. After I leave, you'll see it. Second, there will be one outstanding healing, not just one healing, but there'll be a medically verified sign and wonder that will rock this region. Can you imagine as great as this healing is, if it isn't the one, if it's yet to happen? My point is that the third thing God promised me hasn't happened yet. He said that the glory of God would fill this tent. Now we've had the praise, we've had the worship, we've even had the fire, but we've not yet had the glory. And we have one more night. And I believe that everything God promised me is gonna be fulfilled in this tent tomorrow night. And what you don't wanna do is miss it. You don't wanna watch it. These folks that are watching on live stream, we're so grateful that you're watching. We really are. But those of you that can come in here and be live, Christianity is not a spectator sport. Where two or three are gathered, he said, don't neglect the gathering of yourselves together. Bring people. Don't miss tomorrow night. I have a feeling it's going to be extraordinary. And I can't wait. Will you bow your heads? I'm going to ask Frank to come to the stage. Lord, we are so humble. How many of you can say amen? amen? That tonight has been an amazing night. Amazing. With your heads bowed, Brother Frank Saldana is going to close in prayer. And we're going to expect tomorrow night something that this region will be talking about 30 years from now. It'll be that real and that powerful. Bring those that need healing. Those that don't believe that God is real, bring them. Something is going to happen. Frank. Father, we thank you for the incredible signs, wonders, and miracles, for the healing power that flowed through this place, Lord. And Father, we declare and decree, my God, for every soul that gave their life tonight, God, is the beginning of a new life. So, Father, we pray, we declare and decree, my God, that our whole families shall be saved. Father, your word says to do the work of an evangelism, Lord. I pray that when we leave here, there would be such an urgency and excitement for a new, just fresh fire to see souls won, Lord. And we know that we're living in the greatest time, Lord. This is not something that we're uh, reading about something of old, but today, God, you're still doing signs, wonders, and miracles in healing, Lord. So, Father, I pray, God, that you would put on our heart those who are sick in body that needs a miracle, those that need uh, friends, family, loved ones at work, that we would do whatever it takes to bring them to a place, Lord, so they come to know you, my God. And for this, my God, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you all the glory today. In Jesus' name, somebody give the Lord a clap offering today. My God, my God, my God. Thank you so much. Um, bring somebody that needs to know Jesus tomorrow. He needs to be healed. Amen.